Get out there. I think we've pretty much got a crazy amount of room. We should be good. It's gonna be a luxury drive down there. Let's head out. In 600 feet, turn left onto South Main Street. And then we're pretty much in Alabama. It's a real quick drive here from Iowa. I'm I'm assuming, I don't know, but I'm guessing it's gonna be a good 13 hour day of a man in the car. I which imagine is, things will get pretty weird at some point. Yeah, it's gonna be fun um, for like an hour. <laughs> Going to find Uncle, Uncle Stormbringer. What happened to your face? Had to start the turkey to her beard. Well, here's the deal, boys. I'm at, I'm trying to figure out if I want to order a bunch more of them or not. Oh, that's, that's cool. Good. Yeah, this is cool. yours, buddy. Oh, I look good. You look so weird. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> it's making me uncomfortable. <laughs> Take a couple steps. <laughs> Come back the other way, take a more step. <laughs> <laughs> Being back together, getting ready to go turkey hunting, or if I just really am feeling every mess. There's a great sir. A little bit getting excited. Getting fired up doing some push ups just for. Excited. Just for. <laughs> just because we're excited. Well, we're packed up. Getting ready to leave out and head to Alabama. Probably get there about 11 o'clock, maybe later. Who knows? Regardless, Alabama bound. Time check is 10:48. And we just now made it down here. We're in Alabama. We're gonna go meet Mike over at the Woodhaven shop. We're gonna be crashing at his old camper right there at the Woodhaven shop for the night. Siri says it's right here. So. Hey, you're Tay. Yep. Good to see you, Tay. All right, buddy. You remember that? Oh yeah. Ain't no fresh blood in there, but it's ready for some. <laughs> I got something. I'm on. I don't know if I can wait till tomorrow. It's kind of like Christmas. I All got right. you a surprise. All, All right. right. I'll go beat. <laughs> He's got a surprise for us. Wait this One, two, three. Oh, <laughs> nice. Oh, Check it sweet. out. That looks sweet. That's cool. I think that's, that's a, a cool limited edition. I think in Ooh. honor of the 2019 Turkey Tour, I think we ought to sell a few of them. To, <laughs> yeah. to some, no, I didn't want to scratch them until y'all had a chance to that's see cool. them. And, that you know. That's awesome, Mike. <laughs> you know, that's probably how it's going to work. And I'm not even going to hunt with a man with a crunky barrel. I've got to find somebody that can shoot. I'm just glad these don't have Aaron's face on them. Yeah. <laughs> We're just gonna try to roll that clip as many times as we can. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I'll ever forget it. Yeah. Well, I know I won't. They, uh, took my mask and <laughs> did the dang it, man. Yeah. Good time. Fun calling and good. Yeah, it was a good time. And a lot going on with the company, and that's good. I mean, company's growing. We're blessed. The man's growing, so. You know, I still build turkey calls every day. It's like right now, I mean, I'm having to make use of all the time I can. And, you know, like I said, uh, it doesn't pay the bills for me to go kill turkeys. It pays the bills for me to make turkey calls that go kill turkeys. So yeah, I'll, I'll make sure we got y'all direct right. And then I'll definitely have to come back and build calls. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Mike. Thanks a lot. I'll see y'all in the morning. Yeah. Yep. See I'll see you. Eight o'clock, something like that. Sounds Thank good. Thank you. Uh, Yeah, it'll be fine. Okay. Let's do a limited edition run of it. All right, let's take them back there and scratch them. This is, this is our conditioning stone, and it's what we use to, uh, to start our scratch process on these calls. And all we do is we get in what we've already predetermined as our sweet spot on our calls, and then it's just back and forth till, till we get the condition that we want it and then that that baby's ready to go so for me 
And then I'm gonna pick strikers for it. <laughs> what I'm trying to do too on that is trying to find the line that yeah. you know, a call can have a personality that people don't quite understand how it does it, but it does. In general, we know where these calls run, and in general, they run at about 7 o'clock, you know, and we run it with a, uh, an arc using my wrist. But then to make a certain call run better, or not sometimes it runs better starting here and running into here. And, sometimes, and you'll see me sometimes walk with what we would call walking the striker. I'm going to move the striker a little bit by a little bit going over to try to find the line and that I feel like the call is running easier and getting its optimal sound. And then I'm going to remember, because it's going to, if I'm going to get personal with this call, this is going to be my call, I'm going to I'm gonna to get to where I know what this call will do yeah. with this certain striker and what it, you know what it sounds like. But that's called running your calls and becoming more familiar. You know, it's one of those more advanced techniques. Most folks just want to know that hey, I got a call and I want it to go. I mean, so if you want to get particular about it, there's more things to learn. Right now, I know that call loves a purple heart striker. Well. And there's a hickory in here that's going to run it. You just got to find the right one. I want to make sure I can't get it, buddy. What's wrong with that? It's better than that one. Yeah. yeah. You tell you. Mm -hmm. I'm on this last one. All right guys, we're getting ready to head out from the Woodhaven shop, go set up the camper. But I want to remind y'all real quick, we've got a sweet giveaway going on right now with Woodhaven. You can sign up for it down in the description below. We're giving away all these calls right here. All you got to do is go down there, sign up for the email list, and we will give these away next Tuesday, right? At the end of the month. So we'll give these away in a week, so you better sign up real fast. See you guys at the campground. what a bunch of redneck high school kids do when they're bored. They just brand themselves with fish hooks. <laughs> got a fish hook brand on one side, misspelled tattoo on the other. I got a whole litany of bad decisions on my body, Ted, so don't even think about it. <laughs> I know, I know, guys, we're gonna be getting hunting real soon. There's just a lot of logistical stuff that goes into this deal. Anytime that you go travel out of state, especially an area that you ain't familiar with, you gotta go through all this. And luckily, Mike is down here just letting us use his camper, but you know, trying to figure out where we got internet access, all this stuff takes a while. And now we got the rest of the day, once we get camp set up, to cruise around and kind of get familiar with the roads and the area a little bit in the daylight, and then we can put together a game plan for tomorrow morning. This is a lot different than hunting thick piney woods in like Mississippi or there it's so thick you can move around without turkey seeing you and you've got to move around to find them. And here it ain't going to be a problem of finding them because you're going to hear them. The problem is always moving in on them because they're so open. One can see you coming from 400 yards down through there if you ain't using the drain to your advantage or something. And that's one thing like folks are always asking us how close do you get to turkeys before you start calling to them. That's why we constantly tell you it's just, it all depends on the situation. Down here, the closest we may be able to get to a bird is a ridge over three, 400 yards away, and that's it. Otherwise, you're gonna spook them. And that other scenario I'm just talking about, Mississippi and the thick piney woods and the swamps and stuff, you may be able to get within 50 yards of the thing before you call. All depends on the terrain and the habitat where they're living at. Yeah, I work there. Uh, oh. Oh. That's a strikeout. Oh. Right on the <laughs> There's a lot of turkeys living called a swinging like that. <laughs>
Oh, okay, he puts his head down. <laughs> Swing and a miss. <laughs> Don't get used to this, guys. This is not ours. Alabama trip, we're going to be living uptown because of Mr. Mike here, but I've still got the old Cabela's tent in the back of the Hummer for the next one. All right, boys. Let's go. It's almost one, and we're headed to the woods. All right, yeah, he's getting antsy. Let's go. I'm getting antsy. Yeah. You got old school real tree. Old school. Don't even know what camel that is, but it's old school. <laughs> tree bark. Tree bark. Thing. This is real tree of some sort, I believe. No, it's mossy oak bottomland. Is it? Green. Or tree stand. Yep, you're right. Mossy oak. That's mossy oak. Things are getting a little weird. A little too soon. A little too soon to be this weird. Dude, <laughs> be Christmas. You can hear one from a long ways up here. I didn't get a little service. One bar. All right, guys, it's about 2.30. Me and Jake are headed in. And I wanted to talk to you real briefly about the type of terrain that we're hunting down here in Alabama. There's a lot of this hardwoods, mixed pines, hilly terrain. There's a lot of birds in here, as evidenced from last year. <laughs> we were here one day and got into a bunch of turkeys. But However, it's so open that they can see you coming from a long, long ways away. So it makes it a little bit tougher to just to get out and walk and walk and walk, especially in the middle part of the day like this. If you pick one of these ridges and you go walking down the middle of that thing, these birds can see you coming from four or 500 yards away. So the way that we're navigating this stuff is we're picking a ridge system. We're trying to get up real high but then we're walking just off the side of it. As you can tell, the crest of the ridge is right behind me there. And Jake and I are just hugging this bottom side. And we're popping up every once in a while and calling over the ridge that direction. Because I'm assuming that if we're going to get into turkeys, they're going to be that way. There's a creek over there, it looks like, from the map. And uh, a lot more untouched timber that direction. Road's right here below us. Zach and Ted just drove by a few minutes ago, actually. But we should be able to get into some turkeys on this trip for you. Weather looks like it's gonna be real good. They ought to be gobbling good in the mornings. Folks have been having success for the last few days, so I'm optimistic for the trip. However, like I said, it is so open in here. So when we do get a bird to gobble, our hide is gonna be critical. We're gonna look for blowdowns, kind of like this behind us. Big trees that'll break up our outline because if a bird crests the ridge and he's 50, 60 yards from you, good chance he's gonna be able to see you if he ain't hid real good, so. We're gonna keep following this ridge system back in here. Try to find some turkeys for you guys tonight. Ooh, that's so cool. That's a slow quick shot right there for you. I'm doing a little bragging, showing Ted, <laughs> showing Ted how well I did. See any sheds laying around there, Ted? I'm just kidding. No. I'm just kidding. That's oh, there's another one. We're just coming up here to check out this access, and we hunted. We actually hunted up here one time last year, but we're gonna go into a different ridge, and we we're just coming up through here checking things out. And there's four deer bedded right in this little patch. It's kind of some privet and monofloral rose and stuff in there. And if they're better that close to the road, there's probably not a lot of people no, hunting back in here. <laughs> they're in there. It turns out that people think it's pretty much the same. Aaron and Jake are parked where we are currently. If they, if they go out this way, then, that'd be, then they'll definitely be far enough away. But So what we're going to do is walk out this ridge and maybe try to get to this point or walk out there and just see, feel it out, see how much we think we're going to be able to hear from there. Yeah. I mean, if, I mean, because I doubt they're going to walk yeah, here and end up over there. there I, doubt. I mean, unless they hear a bird gobble them, but we'll just slip in there in front of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're just working our way down on this ridge top trail. There's real thick pines, right? On the sides of these ridge, on the side of this ridge. We're just walking real slow, going quiet, stopping once in a while, listening, scouting our way through. Or 
we're trying to hear birds or see see sign as we're working down through here. And we'll probably get to some points where we'll try and strike something up. See that I called before we crested this little ridge. It's so open in here that if you just go right on top of the ridge and start calling, any turkeys that are on the secondary ridges that run out from this are going to see you. So like I mentioned a while ago, we're trying to hug the ridge cap and then just pop up in certain spots. This is a big ridge that separates the road and the rest of the public area. That's where I'm wanting to get though that high spot over there, Jake. We can hear two big creek bottoms down below that. You know, there's one that can hear that thing somewhere. You can hear that thing in Tennessee. do kind of a Chinese fire drill on that one. Just walking along that ridge and we heard those turkeys scratching down below us. I bet we could hear them things 150 yards away down in that bottom. Can't stress the importance of listening all the time on these calm days. I mean the wind is slightly fluttering right now but not enough to make much of a difference. We were just walking down through those ridges, just been calling, stopping, listening. And Jake and I are spreading out 50, 60 yards apart. One of us is walking while the other one is calling and listening. And then we sound like a couple hens moving across the tops of these ridges. And those turkeys never even heard us calling. They were clear down in the very bottom of that bowl. I think Jake just got a little bit of footage of it. That's why you can't walk on the tops of these ridges though. I mean, if you walk down these, them turkeys are out of there and you don't even know they're there. You always gotta be listening all for that scratching, spitting and drumming, clucking any other turkey sound other than a gobble because they ain't gobbled once today however we know there's turkeys in here so let's see if we can strike up a gobbler well we made it back to this kind of spot where we thought they might be crossing naturally we just ended up finding the highest point where there's two big saddles on sides of us. Hoping to hear stuff like that or pine cones are falling. <laughs> no, we're hoping to hear turkeys walking around or fly up to roost or gobble anything we can to get an idea of where they're at. Turkey. No doubt. Six fifty-seven, and the plan 
worked. We just heard a turkey fly up. Probably, I don't know, 200 yards. Not even, maybe. Right where we were kind of hoping they'd fly up. So, hopefully a couple more go up around us. And we can slip out of here and get back, get right back in here in the morning. Something.